Haleluya. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Glory, glory, glory to God. I want to take this opportunity to invite all of us who are watching me online. And I want to believe that God is going to bless us today. This morning of Sunday, uh, I want us we continue with the topic I began last Sunday concerning faith. We began the topic of faith part 1. And uh, I believe today we are going to go into detail and God willing we are going to look look at uh, another level of faith. We said we have the levels of faith. We have great faith. Uh, we have uh, small faith or little faith and also we have dead faith. And last Sunday uh, we tackled a bit concerning great faith and we saw the story of the centurion who came to Jesus and he had a request concerning one of his servant who was ill and his faith Jesus lamented that it was great and Jesus said he had not seen such faith not even in Israel and so before we go to the ministry of the word i want to uh, we believe god in prayer so that we can hear the word father in the name of Jesus i want to bless you and uh, i want to thank you because of this day i believe that god you have something good for us in store I pray that Father you may speak to your people in such a way that we are going to understand every spirit that come to steal the word of God I rebuke it in Jesus name and I pray for my viewer that God you may open their spiritual ears and they may perceive and hear your word in Jesus name I pray so kindly invite a friend tell them Reverend Maura is live and we are going to partake good things so I want to uh begin uh by reading uh, the scripture from the book of Matthew uh verse 8 and chapter 8 and verse 10 that is that is going to be the from the basis of our teaching today Matthew chapter 8 and verse 10 and i believe you are going to be blessed in Jesus name remember to invite a friend tell them we are we are we are, we are live and god is speaking to us Remember to subscribe and also to hit that button like let us know the clarity of the sound in Jesus name. So the Bible says this Matthew chapter 8 and verse 10 that when Jesus had had it he marveled and said to them that followed very very I say to you I have not found so great faith not not in Israel and I say to you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth uh, i have uh, uh, read that sto- uh, that scripture because today i want us we look at uh, that uh, the great faith in detail because today i want us we have a subtopic called uh, the characteristics of people with great faith and i believe we are going to be uh it is going to be of much importance to us uh when i'm teaching these things i want you to examine your heart and examine your life and uh kindly uh know your level whether you have great faith or little faith or dead faith and i believe after these topics you are going to get yourself but i want to challenge you that even as i continue teaching this topic it is good that we pray and we hear the word so that we, our faith can grow last time i said we should check the source of our information we su- we should check uh, what we are hearing and what we allow into our heart and into our spirit because last time i said that information you are you are as a result of the information that you allow into your life information will shape you or will break you if you allow fear fear will break your life somebody say that fear is false evidence appearing real There are so many people who are living by fear but whatever they are fearing is not even real because fear is false evidence appearing real what about faith uh today when we examine the story of this centurion who was not even among us the so called disciples he demonstrated his the highest level of faith and we are going to look at the character of these people who have great faith and i want to believe that you will be one of those people whom god when he examine or when he look unto you will qualify uh, to be people when we look at this the life of this man centurion there are a number of thing i have observed from the scriptures 
that qualified him to be a man of great faith. And I'm going to mention them, and then we'll go to the next level of it. One of them is this, that people of great faith, they recognize God's authority. That is the point number one of people who have great faith. They demonstrate the highest level, or they, uh, they, they recognize God's authority. Let me say this. You never, be, uh, you never benefit from what you don't believe in. You never submit to what you don't trust. So if you are going to benefit from this kind of faith, or if you are going to submit uh, to, sub, uh, to, uh, to benefit from God through this faith, then we must recognize God's authority. There are so many people who follow God, and when you look at their life, they really don't believe in Him. They don't recognize His authority. And even though so many people who do many things in the name of faith, they do them just to try whether it is going to work. But faith is like a man who uh, jumped from an aeroplane uh, and he has a parachute. Leaf comes what may. The parachute will open itself and it will land him safely. He trusts that parachute. That's what it means to have faith. If you have faith, you will hand your life over to God by recognizing his authority that he is able to do beyond what we are able even to ask. Imagine, there is nothing we can ask from God beyond his ability to supply. The reason why we are not receiving from God is because we have demonstrated no faith, actually dead faith. That is why I'm saying, number one of people who have great faith, they recognize God's authority. I want to ask you, what authority do you recognize? Which authority do you recognize? Because the authority that you recognize, you will submit to. You will trust it. It will work for you. In Jesus' name. I remember one time when Jesus allowed the disciple to go over to the other side of the sea, and the Bible says he was not together with them. He had gone up for prayers. And when he came at the third watch of the night, and they were at the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, and Peter saw Jesus come, walking on the water, and they were so much afraid and said to him, Master, if you are the one, bid me to come. And the Bible said, Jesus told him, come. And Peter took that word of Jesus by faith, and for the first time, a man who has flesh and blood walked upon the water. He did not sink. But the moment he began considering what was happening, he looked aloud and he saw water, water boisterous and he saw the weed. He doubted to see. and he feared. But the moment he acted upon the word of Jesus by recognizing the power behind his authority, he walked upon the water as, as a dry lad. I want to say this. It is enough. It is it is possible for people who believe in God and who have great faith to do the impossibilities. I hear many people comment and say that the miracles that we read in the Bible added with the, uh, with the apostles. You hear people say that the prophet added with the apostles. The great miracles we, uh, we, we read from the Bible, like Jesus turning the water into wine in the can of Galilee, they claim it added with the apostle. And we have reduced our God and his standard so much to our own level of faithlessness. But I want to say this. If we are going to benefit from faith, we must walk by faith by recognizing God's authority. What he said. And it is true. And it can be trusted. So number two, uh, quality number two or character number two of people of great faith is this. People of great faith, they know the power, God's authority. They know that the word of God is not, is not empty. It carries within it power. It carries within it dynamis. Power is the force that causes movement. It is the cause that forces things to change. It is the force that causes could not move to move. What does it mean? that people of great faith, they know the power behind God's authority. There are so many people who are doing so many things in the name of faith, 
and it is not working for them. But the, record, uh, the authority that recognizes the power behind it, it works for you. Can I say this? I have seen uh, uh, females uh, as carries. Uh, even the graduate who graduate fresh from uh, the college, and they are given the crown of the country, plus they are given the power that is gone, they don't mind their size and their age. The moment they start on the roadside, and they stop a big trailer speeding up, the driver must stop. He does not stop because that lady or that female girl is too much for, her, for him, but they stand because they recognize the authority that that lady is wearing, the crown, and they also recognize that if they defy the crown that represent the government, there is something else that will force them to stand or to stop. The power, the power is the gun. The power is the gun. And they stop because they, uh, uh, they recognize the power behind that woman. That she is not just a woman. She is a woman who is backed by force higher than her. That is how the same way, uh, that's the same way faith work. If we recognize this, uh, or we, we know the power behind who is backing us, we will not depend on our own ability and power and energy and strength and, uh, and knowledge. We will know who is behind us and we will just trust upon him. So number three characteristic of great faith is people of great faith, they exercise the authority. I have just mentioned that uh, nowadays we have such kind of people that they no longer believe in the act and in the doings and in the, you know, the record that the Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today and forever, Hebrews 13 is. And what he was doing, he can still do today. If Jesus went to heaven, he left the church to exercise the authority for him. What do I want to, I want to mean? That same authority that Jesus had delegated to the disciple that were together with him when he was physically on earth has been delegated to us. Because Jesus said that those who shall come to him, they shall receive power. Not only the disciple he left, even those who shall believe because of the word that the disciples will speak, they shall also receive the same spirit and the same power. Do not miss. So there is no God of yesterday and God of tomorrow. He is the same God who is yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. It is we who have, not, who have changed by not believing and by not exercising the authority. So men of great faith, they exercise the authority. I want to ask you, have you been exercising authority? I have seen so much in the, in the area of uh, Vilia that God has given me to take care of. I have seen demon leave people. I have seen people receive their miracles. I have seen men, women who have lived even for more than 80 years, other 10 years, receive their miracle of uh, pregnancy and they end up receiving their babies. It is not because I'm so much, but it is because I have decided to trust upon God who backed my words. It is not about you. It is about who you believe. If the president of a nation give you a check signed against by him, and you, he send you to the bank, you don't go to the bank and begin to question the uh, validity of the check. In fact, the signature itself validifies, it validates you because signature in itself show whom that have sent you it is the same case we need to believe this god because he backs whatever we do in his name so number four i want to say this these people who have great faith they submit to this authority they submit to god authority remember and i want to ask you what authority do you submit to because the authority you submit to that authority will work for you. That authority will work for you. The authority you submit to. So number four is this. Those people who have great faith, they submit to the authority of God. Number five and the last one in this lesson of great faith is this. People of great faith, they know the power of God's word's authority. 
They know the power of the word from authority. They know the power of the word from, the, from authority. Remember, the centurion told Jesus, I know you are a man of, of authority like me. If you speak a word, it has authority behind it. It has backing. It has power. So you don't need to come under my roof because I am unworthy. Just speak a word and the word will is able or it is like you. It will just work the same way. Amen. Sometimes God allows people to come to the church. People from distance, people from far. And when they come to me and we pray, sometimes they go as far as uh, they don't believe uh, that I have to, you know, I, 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 if I pray that things they are believing God for will be done. So sometimes they request we, we go physically with them. But this is just uh, a sign of lack of faith. Because you don't need a pastor to go with you. You only need to believe. The word he speaks, if he believe in God who have sent him, that word has the backup of God. Can, you, can I remind you the story of Paul? The Bible says that Paul, that is uh, the apostle, sometimes he would, uh, he would give apron and even overalls and even handkerchief. And people who were possessed with demon, they, they could lay the handkerchief and the overall on them and demon would live crying and shouting. What is that? Because, you know, anything that come into contact with anointed people, it also is also infected with the same grace, the same anointing. So if a handkerchief, something that has no life in itself, can carry the same power as the one who had the power, what about the word that God has spoken to us? I want to challenge you, brethren. It is high time we believe in this God. Can I say this? As I continue to sum up, that uh, I, I, I know that the Bible says even the creation is, is, is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The creation, things that have no life, and even those things have life. The animals, they are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Church, it is high time we manifest the power and the glory of the one who showed us. Waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Meaning, for a long time we have been covered. We have not manifested the power and the glory of God. It is time we manifest the glory of the Father. Because he is, or he takes delight in the manifestation of his, of, of, of his glory through his sons. Can I say this? Jesus said that he, we, we are the body. The church is the body of Christ. The church is not called the body of Jesus. The church is called the body of Christ. Christ means the anointed. Jesus, Christ is the body. Jesus is the body that, uh, that carried Christ. The church, the same way, we are the body that Christ manifests himself through. So church, it is high time we manifest the glory and the power because we make Christ legal on earth again. For it is legal for spirit without flesh to be on this earth. So when we refuse to work for God, we are stopping his work. It is me and you who are physically on this, on this earth. Let us manifest the power and the glory of God. Let us raise the dead. Let us heal the sick. Let us pray for the dumb and the deaf. Let us pray for those who are, are going ears without, you know, miracles of children. Let us give hope to the earth again. In Jesus' name. I want to kindly, uh, uh, before I finish, to touch something concerning uh, literal faith. And I believe uh, I'm going to sum up because this is a long, long, long topic. We can't finish today. And uh, because we, we, we have tomorrow, I believe uh, we are going to just to introduce the topic of literal faith. And then we will, uh, we will later look at uh, the characteristics of literal faith. And then uh, we go to the ne next level of faith. Uh, for literal faith, this level, remember we have tackled concerning great faith. And also I said we have another level of faith that is called literal faith. We will read from the book of Matthew chapter 8 and verse 26. And then we touch Kidogo. And then we call it a day. And I believe next Sunday, 
but the, if God gives us another chance, we can do it in the course of the week. But make sure to sus- subscribe so that we can, you can get notification every time you go live so that you may not miss this word of blessing in Jesus' name. So for literal faith, we are going to read from the, the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 26. And then uh, we are going to call it a day. And he said to them, Why are you fearful, you, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the weed and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the weed and the sea obeys him? And when he was come to the other side, into the country of uh, Genesin, there met him two possessed, possessed with d- devils coming out of the tube, exceeding fear so that no man might pass by that way now here is another example of a literal of another level of faith called little faith i have said we have three levels of faith uh great faith little faith and dead faith now we want to look a bit concerning little faith and then i believe we may, may not finish today but uh, uh we will still continue so here is a, another example one day jesus is uh, is with his disciple in the sea and I don't know why every time uh, Jesus is with his disciples in the, oh, uh, see, in many the missions, things. many things happen. And, but I believe these things happen that Jesus may see the level of the kind of people that followed him. Now, here is another example. They are in the sea, or on the sea. And uh, there was great, great, uh, the wind was boisterous, and the, uh, the sea was, uh, uh, was kind. There was a great storm. And uh, they were in a very great danger, and the uh, disciples were very fearful. They thought it was an end of them, because even the vessel itself was uh, the water was entering. The, the Bible says there was it was great tempest in the sea, in as much as the ship was covered with waves, but Jesus was asleep. Look at this one. Jesus was even asleep at the deck, and. Uh, uh, the disciples, they were, they were like, they are alone. They were in control of the, sh- of the ship. And uh, Jesus was asleep. And this is now where, where things get tight, especially with those people who have little faith or have no faith. Jesus is asleep and things are getting haywire. The, the, the sea is tempest. Storms is all over. And they are very much afraid. They think today it's over. They have forgotten the many miracles Jesus had performed when he was still with them. And uh, the Bible record, uh, they went and awoke him. And they told him, Jesus, don't you care? Because people who have no faith or who have little faith, many times we are tempted to believe that God does not care. And this is the reason why many people, when you talk to them about God and his word, they will tell you this, that is a lie. Where was God when I lost so and so? Where was God when uh, my, my business, you know, went down? Where was God? You know, the, we have become people, you know, our faithlessness have increased because of the many things we have gone through, but we forget the little things that God do for us, and we take them for granted, even having life, and even sometimes waking up in the morning. But I want to say this, those little, little things that we think they are little, they should Prepare us to add faith. They should make our faith increase and grow. So they forget everything because of the temptation and tempest of the sea. And they went to him. And even they lectured him. Because I think that this was not soft. Telling the master, don't you care? Meaning, the way you are behaving, it is a sign that you are not caring. How can you be asleep when the vessel is sinking? How can you be asleep if you care? It is only sometimes, you know, it is not written, the conversation that transpired before Jesus awoke and rebuked the weed. But I want to believe God, it was not soft. People like Peter, you know, Peter was one of a disciple that, uh, he was not very soft. Hmm? He was not very soft. When things got physical, he, he became physical. And uh, they were walking him and they told him, Master, don't you care? Meaning you are careless. How can you be asleep? And this is the attitude with many people. God, you are careless. Even someone come, came and told me, you know, if God is caring, and if God is love as you suppose, or as you claim, you believers and pastors, 
Why are people dying like flies? <laughs> Where is God when that tsunami killed see how many thousands of people? I want to say this. God, God is God. Hmm? God is God. And people dying or living does not make him not to be God. He is God. There is nothing that reduces God to be God. You are ignorant and your negativity does not reduce God to be God. If you don't align with the principles that God has laid down, you will still go down and God will remain God. Can you remember the story of uh, Nineveh? When they repented after the preaching of Jonah, though there was, the, the sin was so great, God remembered them and he forgave them. And he healed them. God is God. So, Sodom and Gomorrah, they, re, they relented to repent. And God has destroyed them with brimstone and fire. Because he is God. Your negativity to... and faithlessness will not reduce God. He remained to be God. I know now I'm not becoming popular. But I would rather speak the truth. Can I say this? God has placed laws and principles that govern the earth. And even the spiritual realm. For example, there is a law we call the law of gravity. God placed that law so that it can keep everything on this earth or on check. If you go on at the highest mountain and jump, even if you speak in tongues, you still come down because you have divided, you have defied that law of gravity. Gravity is to put you down. Gravity knows to obey the one who put it there. And its work is to make sure you remain here. Otherwise, if there is no gravity, we'll be, we'll be flying all over. But because of gravity, we enjoy living on this earth, marrying and remarrying and doing all that things. Hallelujah. Because of gravity. The same case, the laws of the spirit that are governed by the word of God, they are still there. If you defy one or if you break one, it breaks you. The same case that with the word of God. If you break it, it breaks you. Irrespective of who you are, uh, your cultural background, your tribe, either black or white, <laughs> principles are principles. But if you want to break a law, then you have to introduce another law. But I want to say this as I continue, that Jesus woke up. And when he woke up, he was not terrified by what was happening because he was not walking by sight. He was not, you know, he was not like, oh, what is happening? Where was I? He just, the Bible says, he said to them, why are you fearful? Meaning what? When we walk by faith, we cannot fear. Because remember I said that faith is the opposite of fear. If you are fearing, you have no faith. And remember I have said what is fear. Fear is false evidence appearing real. There are so many things that devil throw to us. They appear so real. But in the real sense, if you just prick them, they are, they are nothing. They are not real. They are there just to make you fear. And when you fear, you lose faith. Now, Jesus asked them. He did not first ask them, why are you not kwa nini hamshot maji haya yameingia kwa kwa mashua ndio isi zingi isi zame he he was not bothered first by the circumstance so when you are walking by faith you are not troubled by the circumstance because remember the waves and the storms and the water can go through the ship or through the vessel but not through you the water is raging all over you but not in you but when you allow it to get into your spirit, that is where the biggest problem is. Hallelujah. So he questioned them concerning their status of faith. Why did you fear? Meaning, where is your faith? And part B says, then after he questioned about the status of, of their faith, he rebuked their, he rebuked the, the, the waves and the weed and the sea and there was great calm look at what brought peace look at what brought calm in the midst of this circumstance and crisis and and storms it was a word spoken by authority through faith i want to say this there are so many things church we can stop there are so many impending dangers we can stop in our families in our places of work in this globe when we begin to walk by faith Hallelujah. I want to uh, kindly sum up. I will not go, I'm not going to give you the characteristics of people of little faith. But I have just introduced the topic and I want to believe God next time.
Make sure to follow up so that you can get the portion of that, of that uh, piece of bread from God. We are going to look at people of little faith. How, what are their character, uh, characteristics? What are their characters? And I believe we are going to grow in faith. May God bless you. May God favor you. May God increase you and even increase your faith in Jesus' name. Uh, what a wonderful teaching. I am enjoying. I'm blessed. I want to say this as I finish. The time approaches me and uh, I have realized I, I'm, I'm his hero. And every time my son wants to know the status of everything, even when things are not right. And when we walk with him around, he sometimes stops me and asks me, Dad, can you beat this man? And uh, when you look at the man, my, my son is inquiring whether I can beat him up. I'm telling you, sir, you know, but do you know what I always say? Yes. No, now you're asking. So, Pastor, you lie? No. Because I don't want to break the trust of this boy. Because if I tell him no, he'll begin to doubt his champion. Even many times when he is eating, he eats in the name of he wants to acquire muscle like mine. So I want to say this, we are breaking and we are demoralizing the one who, whom we believe by walking by fear. It is high time we trust him because it is not about us, it is about him. When we ask him the name of Jesus, he will do it for the glory of the Son. May God bless you, may God increase you, may God favor you. I am Reverend Mwaura from uh, Nairobi, Kenya, and uh, I want to wish you blessing. And I believe God is going to increase our faith in Jesus' name. Just subscribe, hit uh, that like button so that we, you can be notified next time we go live so that we, we can follow up with the same topic. And I believe you are going to be blessed. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for my viewer. I pray that God, you may increase our faith. I bind the spirit of fear that come to demoralize and take away our faith. I pray that God, your will and your purposes come to pass in our lives. I pray for those who are going through fear because of Corona and because of many reports they are getting. Father, I rebuke that spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Heal that mama, heal that mzee from wherever he is watching me. There's someone who is watching me from the hospital and you received a very bad report. They have given you days to live, but I want to cancel that plan of the enemy. You will not, live, you will not die, but live. Jennifer, I declare and decree, you will live and not die. I rebuke the spirit of the enemy of death, and I command it to lose you. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shalom and peace.